22% of adults in monogamous relationships admit to cheating. That's sad. That's one in five that have strayed. Now, I, I want to ask you, I'm going to ask all of you, in fact, can you look around and spot a cheater? Are they giving off signs? Oh, there's a lot of vigorous head shaking, yes. Oh, oh, you pointed at the other guy? That's nice. All right. Well, the fact is, I know that there are at least five cheaters in my audience because I actually invited five cheaters in here. I wonder if you guys could pick them out. Yes, unrepentant cheaters. Do they send off some sort of signal? Are they, <laughs> does a big L appear or something? Or, or maybe winner, maybe they're winners. I, they're winning, I don't know. Uh, well, today we're gonna answer that question. Now we're gonna start with Trisha. Now Trisha has had bad luck in love. Many of her ex-boyfriends have cheated on her. She's attractive, she's intelligent, she's successful. So why does this keep happening to her? Ever, anybody else ever had that thought? Why does this happen to me? Watch Trisha's story. My friends ask me why I'm 39 and still single, and it's basically because every guy that I've ever dated and gotten close to that I would have even considered for marriage cheated on me. One day, I was in the bedroom, sitting on the bed, and I looked down and I saw something kind of shiny. It was a used condom. One of the people that cheated on me, when social networking started, I would see comments from other females on his wall. Of course, I'm going to click on their picture, see comments like on all their little pictures of their modeling or whatever, and he's saying, oh, bend over, or oh, your butt's so hot, just things like that that were really super sleazy. Another one, I'm the one that caught him cheating, but he broke up with me on the way to my dad's funeral through text messaging. I want to find out what I need to look for to make sure he's a good guy. They can't be faithful, then they just can't have me. When I heard Trisha's story, I knew it was time to send one of my life changes for a house call. Steve Santagati, world-renowned dating expert, went to Trisha's house to start with the basics. When I go into his apartment, I see a hot girl that looks like she bought her apartment out of, like, a catalog. Right now, you look dangerous. You got the cleavage going. You got the dark hair. You're exotic. But you're not using that. I'm going to teach you how to be rotten. Your nice days are now over. Now your bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, you got to clean your house. Okay? <laughs> this place. And I'm not talking about messy. There's a difference between messy and dirty. Do I dare even look in there? Really? What is it? Black hair? It's all it's in, the, yeah. it's in the drain. You have to clean it every single time. How much of this cat is a part of your life? Would you talk to the cat in front of a guy? Just, hi, kitty. Let me, let's go over and take a look at kitty. That's when she was a baby. That's when she was like three years old. Wow. Really? <laughs> really? A, it's dirty. So now I wonder how often you change your underwear. And B, there's nothing in there. There's nothing in here. Out of the corner of my eye, which is currently not blinded, I see a can of mace next to knives and cats in the refrigerator. Run, run, run. <laughs> One of the things I like about you is that I can say uh, jokes that are a man's or a guy's sensibility, and you do laugh, and you do flirt, and you are smart. I don't teach women how to get the guy. I teach you how to be dangerous. So where does confidence start? Confidence starts with the lingerie you have on and the apartments you look in, and all the images that you see. So you start to think of yourself as a different woman. So basically your problem is you're not using what you have. <laughs> oh, she just gave me the pat. Yeah. You know what the pat means? <laughs> you're not getting any. <laughs> wow. Oh well, Drew, I did my best. I gotta get out of here. And welcome Fisher and Steve Santagati. Steve, uh, I know I introduced you as a life changer. Uh, I'm not sure that being president of Bad Boys Finish First qualifies as life changer, but I know you're a game changer at least. Absolutely. No, and you have a sixth cheater in the room, so that's good. <laughs> I, I have cheated. I have cheated. All right, well, we'll get more into that. Uh, first, I want to hear about Trisha and how many guys cheated on her. About, I can't really prove all of them, but at least maybe five or six. What was the worst one? Um, the worst one was the most... Um, recent one that I found 206 text messages on our phone bill um, to one number and it was a female. Did you call her? Yeah. <laughs> did, did you confront her? No, I, I called the number and um, 
she sent me some emails where he had, she didn't know he had a girlfriend. Mm. So she sent some emails that confirmed that. So slow down. He was cheating with somebody but didn't tell her she he had a girlfriend? No. I'm shocked. Um, <laughs> and that was worse than finding the used condom? Um, well, the used condom was a bit of a shocker. A bit. <laughs> and um, Steve, Steve goes, oh, come on. No, no. I was just saying, like, awful. just if I could interject for it really quickly. Usually, if I'm cheating with two girls, like, oh, I'm, you're my girlfriend and I'm cheating with another girl, one of you has to know. So you're like the bad girl. You know, I, that we, I create that so it's more dangerous. It makes it more provocative. <coughs> Excuse me. I just, I just threw up my that, mouth. Keep that, <laughs> so, just, keep it, just keep it in mind. So it's okay. So, so <laughs> did you ever think your picker might be broken? Did you want to pick the wrong guy? You know, I, I date a variety. Let me test it this way. Okay. Time. Is Steve hot? You better say yes. Well, I've talked to him. <laughs> Are you attracted to him? If I didn't ever talk to him, I would think he was attractive. Okay, so really? <laughs> wow. just, just take wow. it in. Just take it in, Steve. Right. I mean, I, I just, look, but, 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 I, but I, he does have across the room appeal for you. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that tells you something. <laughs> just think about that. Yeah. Just, just think about it. We're going to get into more of those kinds of things as we go through the day today. All right, Steve, tell me about her Facebook page. Yeah, we, we're, first of all, dating these days, everything is part of your profile, if you will. So I'm going to look at everything. First thing I do is look at your beach vacation pictures. So I can see in a bathing suit. Um, but if I see a woman with a lot of cats, like we like guys like crazy, but we like fun crazy or dangerous crazy. We don't like weird crazy. And unfortunately, the whole cat thing, and I love animals, I love cats, the whole cat thing is like a huge red flag. And I'm like, no, this woman... So there's cats on the Facebook page? Yeah, there's going to be, there's so many cats on her Facebook page. It's like one. And don't make oh, it like oh, you're there they are. Yeah. There they are. Yeah. Okay. I mean, look at she's like, this is like an, uh, a Vogue shoot or something. <laughs> so the thing is, if we see that, it's a red flag. And you want to have every image and everything you do with yourself to be a positive, dangerous, proactive thing. Well, Steve, break, break down. What specific things can she do to prevent guys from cheating on her? Well, the number one thing, every woman in this room, including you, is a type. And what we want to do is, like you ladies, you're just as bad and rotten as we are. You're superficial. We want to see different versions of that type. Change your hair. Change the way you dress. Change anything about yourself. Part your hair to the side. Pigtails. Silly things like that will make us look at you as a different woman. The second thing you need to remember is that if you set up a wall where you make dating provocative, that I want to do it that much more because boys, I mean, men are just little boys ultimately. So if you say, where were you? You can't go out with your friends. Who's this your friends with on Facebook? Then I start backing off and I become my own secret world. And now dating is extremely sex. Uh, cheating, sorry, is extreme dating cheating. <laughs> Oops. No, cheating is extremely provocative. And the third thing is have a life outside of the relationship. Be unpredictable. If you're in a pattern where you come home every day at five o'clock, you make, you know, go to the gym, eat dinner, have sex, go to bed, watch Family Guy, whatever, then change it up. Don't text them all the way. Even if you're living together, never let them really know what you're thinking because it's always better for a guy to love you a little bit more than you love him. All right. When we come back, thank you, Steve. I got a clap. Yeah, you got a clap. These guys are coming on you to begin with. They brought them around. It's good. And so well, when we come back, we're going to dig in more with Trisha and really look at why she's attracted to the kinds of guys that she is attracted to. We'll be right back. <laughs> before you start dating them. I told you I had some cheaters in the audience today and you're about to meet them. Now, Trisha has been cheated on by several of her ex-boyfriends in egregious ways, I tell you. And I've enlisted life changer and sex expert, as well as columnist, Simone Bien, all the way from London to help Trisha out. Please welcome Simone. Simone, is it true that you can spot a cheater before you ever go out with them? Absolutely, Dr. Drew. There are behavioral, physical, and verbal cues that are common amongst cheaters. Do you think Trisha is predisposed to being attracted to those sorts of cues, or is she just ignoring them? I think she's predisposed to attracting those sort of cues, but I also think because she doesn't know the signs, which we're going to go through, then she doesn't know how to avoid them. Uh -huh. And I think, you know, it is definitely something that we are going to be able to teach you. So, okay, 
I've got a challenge for you. Okay. You ready? You up for it? Yeah. We're going to see whether you can do what every woman here wants to do, and that is spot a cheetah from a distance. <laughs> so welcome, gentlemen. Welcome our five guys. So Trisha, here we have five guys. Some have cheated and some haven't. Before we give you any advice, just tell me who are you most attracted to? Second one to the end. This is one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Um, we red need, shirt. We need three. A red shirt. Red shirt. Uh, and the third one, the blue shirt at yeah. the end? Okay. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Interesting. Cheaters, I want to hear from you. Number one, have you cheated? I have cheated. Bachelor number two, have you cheated? Never, yes. <laughs> oh, does that line with women? Number three, have you cheated? Never cheated. Well, I'm going to stop you with number three. My, I have information that tells me that, no, but listen, this is interesting. He was a victim of cheating. And sometimes those that have been cheated upon become the cheaters. They flip roles. So he may have the potential to be a cheater. Well done. <laughs> Bachelor number four, have you cheated? No, ma'am, I've never cheated. And gentlemen, at the end, have you cheated? Yes, I've cheated before. Okay. So I think, Trisha, you've got out of the cheaters there two out of three. Approximately, give or take. So you were able to spot. You see, I've got to say something about red shirts. If a man is wearing a red shirt, he becomes more attractive to a woman because it's a sign of testosterone Slow in down. the animal. Slow down. Slow Taking notes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, Steve disagrees. I just, I disagree. I come from a completely different school of thought. My feeling is every guy, if he can get a girl hotter than you, he's going to cheat on you, depending how old he is. It's not about picking the cheater. It's about knowing what to do with men. But some people have morals. I don't mean to cut you off. It's, it's not even morals. It's yeah, it is. It's about, it's, me. It's, it's about being a man, and we are we are no. biologically. You, you're, you're, talking about, you're talking about you're talking about a typical guy, though. You're, you're, you're a typical talking guy. about human beings. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> we are going to get more into this debate in a minute. Let's, let's finish for exercise. Okay. So, out of the cheaters. Trisha, I think you've done well Thank and you. clearly your time with Dr. Drew is rubbing off me. We're going to help you <laughs> even more to help spot the cheaters. Okay, there are physical cues that you need to watch out for. If a guy looks into your eyes for more than five seconds, he's trying to seduce you. But that doesn't mean he's a cheater. <laughs> <laughs> But he has a good when he does that. It means he's exactly. a cheater. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The second is if he smiles out of the corner of his mouth. Then he just wants to get you into bed. <laughs> there are also behavioural cues as well that you want to watch out for. If he flashes his cash and hides behind material possessions, then you know he's probably hiding something. Sex. Dr. Drew, if he mentions it on the first date, it's his number one priority. <laughs> you don't want that. That, that's, well, I don't think that's going to narrow the field very much. <laughs> but if he says that he wants sex on a first date. Well, if he's date, explicit about it. That's what I mean. I he mentions okay. sex. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you, Simone. Now, when we come back, we're going to talk to one of these guys, who's wearing a red shirt, who's actually been cheated upon, and we're going to help him with women cheaters. We'll be right back. <laughs> What are the takeaways people at home can have? The number, the number one thing is you want to maintain the alpha male status in the relationship. I always tell guys that women aren't being bitchy, they're just weeding out the weak. 